Today, I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite ways to create a weekly spread inside of Notion. Now, I realized recently that I've never actually showed you guys in an isolated video how I like to use the timeline view in Notion to create a clean weekly spread inside of an empty page. So what we're gonna do is using a follow along page, which you can duplicate down below, we're going to use a sample task manager to create this weekly spread. Now, if you do not want to use that follow along page, but instead want to use your own task manager, all you'll need is a tasks database that has a date property. So let's just get right into it. So we're going to use a database here. Now, if you wanna follow along, you can duplicate this page and some of this sample data here. So some of the things we have, we have a calendar and a pipeline. Now the calendar, let's click on one of these tasks. You'll see it's opening up in a side peak view. This is a relatively new feature if you don't already know. And in order to have this side peak come up, you'll have to go to your database menu next to the new button here and go to layout. There is a new option down here, open pages in side peak. There are three different options here, side peak, center peak, which is what it was before by default and full page. I like using side peak, especially for this weekly spread setup. So we have two different uh, properties to start, just a date property and a status property. Like I said, all you'll need is this date. And you'll notice that the date does have a time property. Now, some of these tasks have time, some of them do not. You'll see down here, you can toggle end dates on and off and time. Okay, now let's take a look at the pipeline. This is also a pretty basic pipeline. We have inbox or in inbox to working to complete. And with board views, if I go to the database menu and layout, you'll see within our six options here that board is selected. Now, one thing I'm doing here, if you're curious, is I've created a filter. So you notice there's quite a lot of tasks in my calendar, but not all of them are showing up in this pipeline. That's because I want to keep this board view clean. So what I did was create a filter via this button here and in my rules, I restricted the amount of tasks I'm seeing. Firstly, I have a group filter here where status is complete and the date is after one week ago. So all of my tasks that are in the complete section um, that are over a week old will disappear. So that'll clean up old completed tasks. And I also have another group here that says status is in inbox, but date is before a week from now. So I'm excluding all tasks that are scheduled for far into the future. Then I have another one that says, or status is simply working. Let's create that weekly spread. First, we're gonna create a weekly spread inside of this view. We're gonna just look at the pure functionality and then we're gonna go into more of the aesthetics and making it look nice inside of an empty page. So I'm gonna click this plus button up here at the top to create a new database view in this database. Now upon clicking it, I have a few options. It takes me directly to the database menu where I can name this view. Let's name it this week. This is going to be all of the tasks from Monday to Sunday and I'm gonna choose timeline. So let's show timeline by date, that's fine. Let's also show table. And in open pages in, let's keep it as a side peek and press done. But what I wanna see is a weekly view. So I'm gonna exit out of the database menu, go to where it says month here and change it to week. So now we're seeing something that looks more like a weekly view with the red line being on today. And I can also, if I scroll too far ahead, or behind, I can click today and it'll send me right back to the fourth. So what we're gonna do here first is sort by date. Date ascending, so everything looks a little bit cleaner. What I also wanna do, you'll notice that we're seeing the title of the task inside of the card and in the table over here. I only wanna see it in the table. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the database menu Go to properties and we'll have some options here. We have a timeline and a table option. 
So I'm going to go to timeline and just make sure I'm hiding name here. Inside of each card, I want to see the status. So I'm going to press status to show. Now what I want to do is just isolate all of the tasks between this Monday and this Sunday. So to make this work, what I'm going to do is just go into one of these cards. Let's choose this one. And I'm going to create a formula. So let's add a property. Come down to advance and click formula. And I can rename formula to week. So what I'm going to do here is determine if a task is either in this week or next week. And to do that, I have to use an if statement. So let's click through and use if. So you'll notice as typing in if that the if operator gives us a little bit of a description of how it works and its syntax from Notion. So what it does is switches between two options based on another value. Essentially, it's an if then statement. So we're going to say if date is in this week. So in order to determine that, I have to use the format date function. So you'll notice here that format date is formatting a date using the moment standard time format string. Really, that's just a fancy way of saying that inside of format date, inside of these parentheses, I'm going to click date. And I'm just going to format it inside of these quotes to capital W. This will give me the week number in the year for weeks Monday through Sunday. If I want to find the week number for Sunday through Saturday, I would use a lowercase w. So I want to say if format to w equals in the same way, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it over. And I'm going to replace prop date with now open and close parentheses. If that's the case, then I want to show this week in a string. If not, for right now, let's just show an empty space and close it out. Now you'll notice that the result says this week because the date is September 2nd, I'm in September 4th, so that's accurate. Let's press done. And now what I can do is create a filter here by clicking on filter and choosing that week formula. And now what I can do is say week contains the string this week. And you'll notice that now I'm only seeing tasks from this week. Cool. This is exactly what I want, but I also want to see something else. I want to see when I have to work on this task. In order to show the time that this starts, I'm going to create another formula. So let's go into project budget and profitability and create another formula. So I'm going to add another one. Go down to advanced again and click formula. And I'm going to change the name to start time. And then I'm going to edit by clicking inside. So for start time, I'm going to use that format date function again. And I can click that down here. And what I'm going to do is grab the date inside. I, what I did there was press space and then went back. And click date, and I'm going to format this to just grab the time. So I'm going to use LT, both in capital letters. Make sure there's no empty spaces at the end there, and you should be good. So 9 a.m., that's grabbing the start time. What I want to do is only if there is a time here for a task, show the time. If there's no time and it's just the date, show the string all day, assuming that at any point during the day, I want to get this task done, but there is no specific time. So I'm going to say if at the beginning here with an open parentheses, if this returns, so equals 12 a.m. So 12 a.m. will show up for dates that have no time. So if it does show up that way, I want it to show the string all day. Otherwise, I just want it to show the time. So I'm going to again format date to date LT and then close this out with another parentheses. So that's going to be the final formula. Done. You can drag this up here, close this out. We're going to go back to that database menu, go to properties 
And now in addition to that status, I also want to see the start time. So I'm going to click that, maybe drag it before status. And now you'll see in our week view, the time this task needs to get started, either the time or all day and the status it has attached to it. Okay, so now we know how to create a weekly spread. Let's try to make this look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing inside of what would be a dashboard or an empty page. So to do that, let's go back to the follow along YouTube page. So what I'm gonna do is just click on the block menu next to my tasks, and I'm going to copy the link. So this will copy to my clipboard, and you should see that notification. And then I'm gonna paste and there should be an option here that says create link database view. So let's click create a linked view. And now what we have is a linked view to tasks. If you're unfamiliar with Notion and how this works, basically what we were just working in was the original database. Now we're creating a linked database to the original. So what you can do with linked databases is visualize that database in different ways. You can create new filters, sorts, database views without affecting the original. However, if you add new entries to these linked views or modify any of the pages in your database through the linked database, it will affect the original. The first thing it's asking is, do you want to copy an existing view from the original? And in this case, I do. I want to copy this week. And you'll notice that all of the filters remain and the sort so let's exit out. We basically have what we want. I'm going to click on today over here. So right now we see the timeline kind of going off the page to the right here. So in order to make this look aesthetically pleasing, what I like to do is use a call out block. So I'm going to go forward slash inside of the body of the page and look for call out in the block menu. Now what I like to do is change the color. Let's just change the color to default a recent update with Notion. When you click on this emoji, there is an option for these minimal icons. So let's choose maybe a star and I can even change the color. So let's choose red. Cool. Now what I'm gonna do is just drag this to this callout inside of the callout. And you'll notice that it's cleaned it up a bit. So we don't see that table anymore, but we do still see these cards with the start time and the status property. So this is my preferred view. So let's say this week and next week. And I actually wanna change the color of this star to gray. And I can also hide this button that says my tasks, hide database title. And of course, if I were to click on one of these, it will open in a side peak view. So what's nice about this side peak is that I can still manipulate everything on this side of the screen. Maybe go to this task here on Friday and it will appear in my side peak over here. I could even right click on this task and edit the property without interfering with our side peak here. So that's pretty useful. In addition to navigating tasks within this week, you can also add new tasks via this bar down at the bottom. So maybe for Wednesday, for instance, I can click here and put in the title of the task. You'll notice that it is landing in this week. We have the date of August 31st, the status, which we can change. Maybe you can change it to complete. Start time is all day because there is no time, but if we change it and include a time, maybe 12 p.m., that will show up as start time and we should see it Wednesday, 12 p.m. So now let's create another view that is for next week. To do that, we need to manipulate that formula we created before. So let's click any one of these cards Maybe this one, go to that week formula and click through. And we're going to alter this a bit. So here we're saying, if it is within this week, show the string this week. But let's add another if statement that says if to number. So I'm going to use a function called to number. 
And inside of two number, I'm going to copy this format function we had up here, up to W, and I'm gonna paste that within the parentheses. So what I'm doing here is just turning that weak number into an actual number we can calculate with. So with this, I'm gonna say, if the number of the week equals, in the same way, I'm just going to copy this from two number to the end of the parentheses here, paste it after the double equal sign, and I'm gonna replace prop date with now. So now we're just grabbing the week of now and the actual number because we're using two at number. And I'm just gonna say this week plus one. So next week plus one. If that's the case, then return the string next week. Otherwise, just give me a blank space again, and I'm gonna close this out with a second parentheses because now we have two if statements. So this is the final formula. Okay, so now that we have this, what I can do is click on this week over here in this view, the title, and I'm gonna duplicate it. So what this will do is give us the exact same view as this week, but we're just gonna rename it to next week. Go to filter, and we need to change this so that it contains not the string this week, but next week. So if we exit out and click on today, we can scroll over a bit and see all of the tasks for next week. That is pretty much all I wanted to share with you. Like I said before, not only can you navigate these tasks now, but you can also plan for next week by adding new tasks. And that side view window is really, really helpful for something like this. So I hope that was informative. I hope that helped you. If you wanted to explore a different way to create a weekly spread inside of Notion using a database, um, of course, all relevant database and links are down below the full template and the follow along page. And I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.